Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew and in this video we're gonna restore and mod the PlayStation 2. I bought this PlayStation a while ago together with the original box, but I got the PlayStation only. I mean, no controller, no other cables or games. The controller, I bought it separately. The condition isn't great. I can hear that something is broken from the inside, but when I test it, it's still working. The video cable, I got it from another place. The cable is used, but still working. And the power cable, I already have that. The cable is the same as to the many laptop chargers. Also, this PS2 has some problems. Like the cooling fan isn't always working. The CD-ROM sometimes will open, but sometimes not. And the CD-ROM doesn't read CDs. So I cannot play any CD or game. After I have done all the basic checks, I move to disassembling. In general, the PS2 isn't hard to open and clean. The only thing which requests attention are the flat cables that are connecting the hardware. So this is the only place that requests more attention and careful work. Well, and I'm done with the PS2, but now I will continue with disassembling the controller. The controller has its own weaknesses. The weakness here are the wires from the both vibration motors. The wires are very thin and easy to torn or desolder from the controller's board. So this is another place where it requests a little bit more attention. And I'm done with the controller. Now before I move to cleaning, first I need to do some repairs and remove some stuff. So first I remove the unwanted chip from the motherboard. 
And the reason why the cooling fan isn't always working is coming from the connector on the motherboard. The connector was a little bit damaged previously, I mean it's a little bit desoldered. And when I try to remove the cooling fan, the connector just fall out. Fortunately, the contacts are still good. And this isn't a bigger problem, so the connector can be easy soldered back to the motherboard. Well, and I'm done with a small repair. Everything looks fine. And now I can move to detail cleaning process. As usual, when I clean electronics, I'm using few brushes, 96% isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds. But also, while cleaning, I always check any part in case if I need to make some additional repairs or change something. However, this is an old electronics, so we can expect almost anything. Well, the electronics from the PS2 are clean and everything looks pretty fine, so no additional repairs are required, which is great. Now let's move to the controller. So here again I have used few brushes, 96% isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds. And carefully I clean any part in detail. Well, and I'm done with the controller also. But I'm not done with the case and other parts and plastics. So here, anything that is without electronics, I wash it using soap and warm water. I wash all these parts, because with washing I will remove all the dust and dirt in detail. And after washing, everything is ready for the next step. And the next step is making some modifications. So first I took the paper tape and I start protecting all sides around except the top side. Now I took a pure white spray and I paint the top side only. Now I pull a drawing that I keep for more than 20 years. This is an alien that I had on a t-shirt back in 1997 or 1998. But I made a one copy from it because I really like it. This drawing is on a tracing paper, but now to copy the painting to the PS2, I will use indigo or carbon paper. This is old school method to copy something to some other surface or paper. Carbon paper was used back in time when typewriters were widely used. I mean before we have scanners and photocopiers. However, the both types of paper are still used, even today, by many artists, fashion designers and more. Personally, I have used the both papers in high school, back then when we have no computers or any modern touch, so we have to do it all manually.
well and I'm done with replicating the image. Now I took a paper tape and again I cross over one more taping process. After I finish with taping, I took my precision knife or scalpel and I start with cutting. So now, the white outer part, I will paint into a deep black. But here again, I used a pure white spray. Over the black background, I have created a small dots, which are going to be stars. And one closer star. This effect I created using a small cardboard. Actually, in this way, you can create light beams or comets or something similar. Now. After the basic painting, I cross over one more inner paint and now to cover some traces from the carbon paper. And finally, I got a surface ready for painting. Now I took acrylic markers and I start with painting. I haven't painted like this for a pretty long time, I mean with years, but I'm gonna try the best now. Well, the drawing is almost complete, and later I will add a few more details, but now I will move to making some other modifications. Again, I cross over another taping process, but now I will go with a different spray, and that is Lagoon Blue. This is a very beautiful shade, and it's one of my favorites. With this spray, I paint the front side, but only the outer plastic, and as finish, using a white acrylic marker, I made lines around, because to get something like a neon glow effect. Now when I finish with the front side of the PlayStation 2, I took Melon Yellow Spray, and with this spray I paint the bottom part of the PS2. Also here as well I used the white acrylic marker to create some effects, mostly around the corners. Well, and after I finish with painting, I start with returning some parts to the case, to get the final image. And I almost forgot, at the back side of the case, I used light denim blue. Here I go with a different color, because I want to get some retro design. Well, and finally I can move to assembling the entire PlayStation.
and the assembling is complete. Before I continue with anything, first I test the PS2 to be sure that everything is ok. And fortunately, everything is working just fine. And the final thing is the controller, which I left it for the end. I have a couple of ideas about how to paint the controller, but I've decided to do something different. So again, I cross over a small taping process. Now I took a telemagenta spray. This looked like a pink, but actually this is a shade from violet. And with this color, I paint the top part of the controller. So again, I cross over the last taping process. And after, I used a pure white spray. However, this is not all. Again, I took my acrylic markers and I cross over making more details. And in the end, I got something like cookie or donut. Well, and now I can assemble the controller. Okay, the controller looks fine. The buttons are feeling right and clicky as needs to be. And in general, all is how needs to be. And after making all these changes, this is the final result. Well, and a few more words about this PlayStation 2. Instead of this PlayStation 2 finish in the trash or some landfill, we turn it into a function again, but also into a something that will decorate my living space. I know, this is a pretty old game console, but personally, for me, it's a technology that can be still used and it's very enjoyable. The game for the PlayStation 2 are widely available and easy and cheap to find. The game graphics aren't modern, but whenever I play something like this, I always see history and evolution. I mean the graphics, the hardware, how everything turns from something simple into something much real and more powerful. Personally for me, these older graphics have a some special charm that isn't comparable with anything else. Well, and this is all about this PlayStation 2, and I'm very very glad, because I got it working, and I made something from it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back, mod and use some older tech, and as well even a newer tech. Also, if you want to support my channel and my work, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.